Um, you're also a philosopher, right? I'm interested in your purview and for our spear lifters, kind of what this year means from your perspective as you know, your philosophical insight would be really interesting. This year has been a shit show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, just as, as, a, as it relates to, I, I guess, as it relates to just our own humanity. Okay. Yeah. As what I mean by that is that we, as long as, you know, I've been alive, maybe as long as you've been alive, we haven't experienced in such a short time period a way of completely changing the course of our humanity, unlike what we are experiencing right now. I mean, it's yeah. it's unprecedented, you know? It's um, crazy. I mean, we we yeah. realize how vulnerable we are. Think about it. What, yeah, that's what I want to get at. What do you see it from your your eyes in that way? Like, what do you think about all this? We thought we were invincible. This, this COVID-19 or SARS, COVID, whatever you want to call it, the corona, right. coronavirus for short, um, or, or the colloquial term for it, it's tiny. It's 125 nanometers in diameter. It's completely naked, completely in, invisible to the naked eye. Um, even if you had a million, million of them bunched up together, you still wouldn't be able to see them. Yet, it traveled around the world in a few weeks. The way it works is it goes into your, into your cells, it attaches onto a cell, pretending it's something else, goes into the cell, convinces your own cell to help it produce, reproduce itself, and then go, go elsewhere. And it went around the world in a few days, and it jumped from a, a bat to a pendulum to a human. This a tiny little thing did all this damage to people's health. Tragically, people have died even alone. It's exposed our health systems. It's exposed our inequalities because those at the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum are, are hit the worst. Um, it's exposed weak leadership in the part of many governments. Mm -hmm. um, it's also exposed strong leadership in the part of others. It's, it's also taught us that's all the negative things, but in concert with this pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic, there's been a bad pandemic of stress and fear. People have spent right. too much time watching the bad news. You've got to limit your time on that stuff. And, but I'm optimistic, Devin, that we've learned a lot of positive things too. So I've had to spend time, I've been locked on in this, I'm in my flat now. It's um, 70 square meters. I've been here with my wife and two yeah. children. Um, one of them was born in the height of COVID right here, a meter from where I'm standing. The Congratulations. Born. Thanks. Uh, just uh, just over 11, 11 weeks and one day ago today. I'm not counting or anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and you know, I realized how important our, our family is, how important it is to, to focus on family, how lucky I am to have my family, how lucky I am to have friends. Um, our neighbors have been very kind to us. We've been kind to our neighbors as well. So we've realized the importance of our social connections and um, we realized we can't rely, all that stuff, what, what good does, uh, we don't need all that shopping actually. Well, I'm sorry for my friends who own shops, I'm hoping yeah. to get back up the car, but I mean, we don't need all that stuff. M most people were okay. The amount um, of money we're saving, right? That's right. And then we, we, we would to appreciate our social connections because we're missing them now. Yeah. We're isolated, forced. We've, isolation has been forced upon us. We realize what we've missed. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we come out of this with the positive lessons, not going backwards, not when the shops opened, all of a sudden go nuts, have an orgy of shopping, but come out of it sensibly good leadership, address unnecessary inequalities, no matter whether you're a conservative or liberal, there's no need for someone to be starving or for a healthcare professional in the hospital not to have enough equipment to protect themselves. Um, I appreciate those with people, there's a lot of people on, my father-in-law's a delivery driver on minimum wage. He's been so-called a key worker. He's been exposing himself to risk every night. Right. Um, he's been more appreciated now. He gets, he never used to get tips and how he gets, but still, I mean, these people were not, were underappreciated by their employers and society. So I hope we come out of it with um, more, more love for each other. I haven't, I haven't planned this. So just, you know, more love for each other, focus on a, a, a more resilient society, and we are more resilient as individuals. And, and I hope and, that my research has taken place a part in that. 
Absolutely. And and I think that's why it's important you and I are, are having this conversation right now and this year and this time because you are all about that is that yeah. really that again, we're going back to that thread we've talked about throughout this conversation about appreciation, about gratitude, about realizing self-awareness, you know, like we're, we're more self-aware now, like you said, about what we do with our life, the people around us, how things are, et cetera. And it goes back to what we're speaking about earlier, that self-awareness, that appreciation, that sense of what we are really is amazing. What we are doing with our life, if we do it in a way that has just, has so much potential, you know? I mean, so it, there's this thread of like taking into account that there's so much that we can be grateful for all the time. You know, and being in this in this you know particular circumstance all around the world, the whole world's experiencing this to some degree, right? Um, can really, really bring out that in us if we choose if we choose to, to right? Yeah, it's um, like a, it gets everybody, no matter what what religion you are, what race you are. Yeah, we're, we're all humankind, right? And, um, mm -hmm. So we're all in this together. Yeah. And I hope that we realize that both at the micro level and the macro level and, and, and come out of this because things are being destroyed now as we have an opportunity yeah. to build it back up the way, the way we like, the, the way that's making everybody happier and healthier. Exactly, Jeremy. Yeah. And I just got a couple other things to ask you, Jeremy, if you would permit. Um, the, let's talk, the, because what we're going through now falls in line well with the nocebo effect. Can you go into a bit of that detail and how that relates to what we're experiencing now? Yeah. So in my research on the placebo effect, which basically is the effect of a positive belief, the positive effect, the nocebo is the placebo's naughty cousin. So if you know, if the placebo is like Luke Skywalker, the nocebo is like Darth Vader. Um, the nocebo is the negative effect of a negative belief. And I first came across this by there was one guy, it's a true story. He was in a clinical trial of a new antidepressant and um, he was, uh, he felt kind of like he didn't like life anymore. So he swallowed all, all of his pills from the pill bottle. But as soon as he did it, he thought I made a mistake. He ran to the hospital. He told the doctors, I swallowed all my, swallowed all my pills and then collapsed. Um, his blood pressure was really low, heart rate was really high. They had to give him six liters of fluid oh my just to get his blood pressure to normal. But then at that time, the head physician from the clinical trial arrived and ascertained that this guy, they call him Mr. A, was in the placebo arm of the trial. He had taken 30 placebos, like sugar pills. So he didn't overdose on the drug, mm -hmm. he overdosed on his own fear. Oh my another, goodness. Yeah, I did another mega study where I found, uh, identified a quarter of a million patients, 250,000 patients, all of whom had taken a placebo, like a sugar pill in a clinical trial. Half of them report having at least one negative side effect. Now the negative side effect isn't because of the sugar pill. It could be just because it comes up in real life and they didn't know what, why it was the case, but we did some deeper analysis and Oftentimes, it's because they expect something bad to happen. Right, right. Again, back to the stress response. They're stressed out about a tummy ache and they experience a tummy ache. They're stressed out about a headache, they get a headache, et, sure. et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so now with the COVID pandemic, it's no see ball day. Not, we wake up in the morning, number of deaths, number of new cases, new lockdown. And then that's a, our, that's a no see ball all the time. And then there's a, um, conflicting messages from different countries what's who's right who's wrong and there's all kinds of different theories about how it come came about um, including conspiracy theories and fake news all that together we're basically <laughs> doing what mr a did but not as bad we're not most of us aren't passing out but it's not good for health it increases anxiety depression pain tremendously pain. right yeah so we got to kind of limit it do the relaxation stuff and then Greatly limit the amount of time you spend looking at the news. Use your phone wisely. Use your technology wisely to do positive things. And then check the news out once a day to see if there's any necessary updates. And then right. turn it back off. And I, and I think that's important what you're saying. Um, yeah. 
as far as news, because look, we some countries are contingent on what they're told that they can and, and can't do and when they can and can't do it. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, we got to pay attention to that and know what that means so yeah. we can, you know, anticipate at least some way of norm <laughs> normality pre-COVID, <laughs> which I don't think will be totally, not, you know, um, on the horizon for a while. But yeah, we have to we have to be up to date at least in a certain way to know, you know, what what's safe and not safe. I mean, and that should be the extent of it, right? Yeah. yeah.